Hi everyone. I'm really excited today because Eileen Hull has a new release. Um, it's all got a bit of a sewing theme and actually it's kind of a, an old release in a way because what Eileen's done for this release is brought back some old favourites because, well, because everyone kept asking her to really. Um, these dies were originally released back in, I think it was 2015. I didn't start working for Sizzix till the year after that, actually. So these are new to me, so I'm coming at this fresh. But actually, um, a lot of the ladies on Eileen's design team um, have been working with her so long that they actually um, made samples the first time around, which is really cool. So it makes a cantilever sewing box, which um, let me bring in a finished sample. My mum's got a beautiful Victorian sewing box, so it's kind of that that lovely vintage feel and it creates this very clever cantilever opening and closing which is, is so cool. The other thing to mention is you're not limited to this. Um, you've got these sort of straps that hold it together. Of course if you put this three one here you could then stack another box on top. So if you want to maybe do like some sort of single storage going up you could do that too so there's there are other ways to use this um but i'm going to concentrate today on just showing you how to put it together um i'm on i'm going to put this video out on the same day that i am going to be on hobby maker tv here in the uk so i'll refer to this in my shows so that if you've just bought this you can use this video to remind you how to put it together when you first get your dies. So I'm not going to dwell in this video too much on the kind of decorating of it. Um, I'm going to focus more on the construction just so you've got an easy video to refer to. So let's start with the die itself. It's one of the longer big dies, which is great because it does mean that you can use this in a standard size big shot. You don't need an A4 machine for this. Um, if you've got the the A4, the Big Shot Plus or the Big Shot Switch. Obviously, this will work fine with those because you've got A4 plates with those and they're they're long enough. If you are using a standard size Big Shot with these plates, I would highly recommend getting the Sizzix extended plates because it means you can cut it easily in one go. Quite often with the longer dies, if you haven't got the extended plates, you can get away with your standard plates and kind of do it in sections. And you absolutely can do that with this because you've got, I know it's hard to see when it's black on black, but this is the little, um, what would you call that? The little drawer, I guess. Um, then this is the lid. Then you've got the legs and then the little um, sort of connecting pieces. So of course, you could cut your mat board into sections and use your shorter plates. But if you're investing in a, in a big style like this, just invest in the plates as well, because it's just going to make your life easier. And you will find if you try and save the cost of the plates, you end up making mistakes when you're sort of doing it, fudging it with the smaller plates. So in the long run, you're going to need the plates for other dies probably in the future. If you weren't like me, you're an Eileen Hull fan. So I would say just invest in the plates, get yourself some. They do last quite a long time, actually. You can see by looking at the state of mine, these have been well loved and used. I've been using these same plates um, for a couple of years now, actually, because, you know, cutting journals and, and Eileen Hull things isn't something I'm doing every day. So um, you will find they last you. So... That's the first thing I recommend getting if you're buying this. The second thing, the Sizzix mat board is really useful because it's already cut to the right size. I'm going to open this actually because we're going to use this pack. It's 855 GSM, so it's very sturdy. Um, if, if you're in the States, that's £525. So really nice and thick. And by the way, um, the other thing I should say, this is mat board. If you're in the UK... We tend to call it mount board, but it's the same thing. Mat board, mount board. It's just uh, different different words for it. So you get uh, six in a pack, I think. Yeah, six sheets. So that will that will be more than enough to make at least one of these. So the first thing to talk about is how many of each element you're going to need. And I'm going to show you how I've worked this out so that I use I'm, I'm most effective with the use of my mat board. 
um, because you're going to need, if you think about it, we've got six of these little drawers. So we're going to need six of that. The legs, you only need two. So that's this, uh, that's that piece. These lids, you're going to need two. And then these, you are going to need, so you've got two long on each side. So you're going to need four long and then it cuts two of those. So you're going to need to do um, eight of those. So that's what we need of each. So the first thing to do, if you think about it, we kind of need at least two of everything. We need two lids, we need two feet. We're going to need six of those and several of those. So I know I can do two cuts of the whole thing. So that's going to be my starting point. Then before you start cutting, you need to think about how you're going to decorate it. Because presumably you don't just want a plain white sewing box. With this one, I covered my mat board. I stamped on some craft card and then covered my mat board sheet with the stamped card. Let me grab another one to show you. Then for this one, I covered my mat board with a patterned paper. It's got a very subtle pattern. It's just got some light text on it. And then I've added some die cut flowers to the top. So, um, and the other thing is with both of mine, I've left the insides white. You absolutely can cover both sides of your mat board before you cut it. And then you will have patterned card on the inside if you want to do that. Um, I, to save time, just did them quite simply. So for these, what I'm going to do, I, I've got in my mind that I actually want to create a sewing box that looks like wood. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover these, first of all, with tan texture roll. And that's another thing that you might want to be purchasing. The Sizzix texture roll comes in a variety of different finishes. There are some lovely metallics. You've got rose gold, gold and silver. There's the silver one, actually. Um, then you've got some matte finishes and they do actually do a load of lovely pastel colours that match the sort of Sizzix colour story. So there's some lovely sort of um, pinks. Um, there's a lavender, yellow, blue, some lovely spring colours, actually. Um, neutrals you've got a lovely gray i'm going to use this tan there's also a cork which is quite effective and looks quite good on this sewing box because obviously it gives it that sort of natural look the sizzix texture roll also comes in two heights this is the six inch which of course is going to be perfect for putting on my mat board but they do do a, a taller like a 12 inch high one so for bigger projects um you've got the option but um, this tan is going to work perfectly on this mat board. So we'll use this one. The other thing to mention is you're going to need something to stick your pattern card stock, your texture roll, whatever, to the mat board, either to both sides or one, depending on whether, whether you're, you want the inside of your drawers decorated. I like to use tape roll. I have been buying a tall sort of A4 size texture roll online but I can't seem to find it at the moment. So I've got this one. This is a studio light one and it's not quite long enough. So I have to do it in strips, which is fine. Um, and when I have the, the longer A4 one, I end up, it's too long. So I end up cutting a bit off anyway. So it kind of doesn't really matter. But I do like um, the double-sided tape idea for these because it just gives you a nice, good adhesion it sticks really well i'm a bit wonky here because i can't put my head right over um because i'll be in the way of, of the camera let me just grab my scissors to trim this off there we go so i'm going to flip that over i won't make you watch me doing this twice we'll do one and then i'll skip ahead for you so you're going to cover one side or both with this, depending on whether you want the inside of the drawers decorated. And this is great for using up all your um, all that all those 12 by 12 pattern papers that you might have been hoarding for years like me. Really useful for that. These aren't the scissors I normally use for this, which is why I'm a bit clumsy. I normally use my great big Fiskars, but I've already put them in my car ready for doing the um, 
the shows on Hobby Maker with these. So I've kind of got what's left on my desk to work with. So for this extra little overhang, I can tear that once I just start it off. So because I've ended up having to use two strips, I'll have to peel the backing off the two pieces, which isn't a big deal. Um, you can also buy A4 sheets of adhesive. I, I've been buying the rolls because it works out more cost effective, but for whatever reason can't seem to get the bigger rolls at the moment there must be must be a shortage in the uk so texture roll this is fantastic stuff for this type of project because it's um it's kind of tougher than cardstock you can't really tear it so it makes your project more durable um you absolutely can just use patterned cardstock for all of these because um you know it works really well like i've i've done on these but the texture roll does give it a really nice strength so all you're going to do is line that up again it's a bit tricky for me because i can't put my head right over to check i'm straight but that's fine there we go and we'll chop that off And of course, what I'm doing now, you're going to do twice. So then I'm going to show you how to uh, work out the rest of it. So I've got my mat board covered so we can start die cutting. With big dies, if you are using patterned cardstock or, you know, texture or whatever you're using, you will be putting that pattern or texture or whatever face down on your die. That will be the front. If I'd put, say, say I wanted the outside of my sewing box to be brown um, and I'd put some patterned, some really nice floral pattern paper on here that I wanted to be inside the drawers, I would put that on this side. So you always put facing the die what you want to be on the outside. So we're going to lay that over. And of course, because the mat board is the right size, I don't have to trim it or do anything. It fits perfectly. Just bring in my cutting plate, get rid of this packaging. So you just need your two clear plates and you're going to sandwich that in between and run it through your big shot. Um, let me see if I can fit mine. Might have to do it sideways for you. There you are. So you're just going to run that through. So as I say, you're fine with a standard size big shot if you've got these longer plates. And that is gonna die cut and score. That's the beauty of Eileen's dies and what make, makes them so unique. Um, well, or Sizzix dies, I should say, is that you've got the technology where it not only cuts your outline, but it puts your score lines in. And to have score lines in something as thick as mat board is really clever. So that's my drawer. That's my lid. Then I've got feet. And then I've got these little connecting strips. So I'm going to do exactly the same again because I need two of all of those things at least. Now, you'll notice all these little pieces from the holes just popped out of my die. If you get them sticking inside, take a pokey tool and take them out because if they build up, you'll end up at the point where it won't cut the holes for you because they'll be sort of clogged out. So um, get in the habit. Generally, because there is a little spring in there, they just ping out, you don't have to do anything. But I just thought I'd mention that bit of maintenance. So I'm gonna do the same again. Then I'm gonna show you how to cut the rest of the things you need. Okay, so I've done the same again, which has now given me another set. So I now have two drawers, two feet and two lids. And then I've got two of the longer and four of the shorter sort of straps. So I only need two lids and I only need two of the feet. So I'm done with those, but I do need another four because I need six in total of these 
and then this is basically enough for one side so I kind of yeah no not quite yes one two three four one two yeah so I kind of need the same again of those now I don't want to run through my whole sheet because I don't need I don't need the lid I don't need the feet so I don't want to waste my mat board because to get four more of these I'd be wasting four whole sheets so that would mean six whole sheets of mat board if that makes sense so what I'm going to do is put my mat board just over this drawer piece which is this piece here so I'm just going to start like that and cut out that so I'm going to run that through I'll just do it off camera rather than bring my machine in and out all the time just move so, I can get through. so I'm just going to run that through and that's just going to cut me that one drawer which is great so there we go so now I've got three make sure my little circles are out then I'm going to turn this around and get another one from the other side so I'm keeping this centerpiece of my mat board so I'm going to run that through So now I've got four. So I only need two more. So one more sheet of mat board, basically. So this is my third sheet of mat board. I've done two fully through. Then I've got the two sides of my drawers here. Let's get all these pieces off. Then what I'm going to do is just snip away the edges. Then I can lay this piece on my die. Here are my little um, connecting pieces. So if I pop that over there, I can get another set of those out of this mat board. So I just need these straps. There we go. Now, if you did want any extra straps when you get to the end, if you you know if you wanted to use them for anything else, you could probably get another couple out of here just by lining that up. So I'm just going to do the same again now with the last piece of mat board. So this has meant that I've only used four pieces of mat board in total um to make this box so i'm just going to do exactly the same again i'll skip forward because you don't need to watch me do the same thing again but that's that's going to then give me everything i need right so i now have everything i need let's pop all this mess out of the way so let's run through what i've got so we've now got six of these make sure you poke out all the centerpieces because this is where your brads are going to go to hold this together so we've got six of these one two three four five six can you hear that really noisy bird outside <laughs> he's there or she's there every evening making that racket <laughs> So I've got six of those, I've got two lids, I've got two feet, and then I've got four of the longer connecting pieces, and then I should have eight of the short ones, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, 
the night. Let's just put that hole out of that one. So I've got everything I need now and the assembly of this is really quite straightforward. So I'm just going to get all these pieces off my desk. I would recommend using a hot glue gun because it's, it's an instant grab. If you prefer not to use a hot glue gun and you want to use like a wet glue, like a PVA or something, grab yourself um, like an elastic band or something because once you put these drawers together, you're only sticking them on quite a very thin piece like so. So if you've got wet glue that needs to sort of set almost, if you put an elastic band around the outside, that will just hold that tight and stop it from springing back open. But I do find hot glue gum works the best because it's kind of instantly, instantly set as such. So you haven't got to sort of worry about elastic bands or hanging on to it till it sets. So I've got those all folded. So I've got my glue gun already on, so it should be good to go. And I'll show you how my sort of tips for putting these together. So they literally just overlap slightly and touch. So if you start on one corner, I would recommend having a good glue gun. This is the Sizzix glue gun. You want quite a, quite a fine line. So if you've got a glue gun that really kind of squidges out, you're going to get glue everywhere. So hold that in place just for a couple of seconds. Then while it's still warm, you can just neaten up the edge a little bit if you want to. I'm going to cover this with some more paper so I'm not too fussed. And don't get too fussy about cleaning it at this point because you've only got a tiny piece of glue holding that together if you start trying to clear all of the glue off you'll end up with with not enough left to hold it hold it together so i'm going to do the same on this side i'm going to put a very thin i did notice my glue gum needs a bit of a push um i'm going to put a very thin line of glue along that edge right on the edge like so and then just press it together, hold it firm just for a couple of seconds because don't touch the hot glue the second you do it because it will be red hot. But if you just wait till it cools a little, you can just remove most of the excess. Okay, just so it's not too messy looking. And then we come to the other side. Now at this point, you kind of want to do both almost together. So we're going to go along this edge. And this one. And then do them together. It doesn't matter which way round you do it in terms of which edge against which. I think I've done this in the opposite way to the other one end, but so take off the excess. So you're going to repeat that for all six. So I'll jump ahead and do that. Then, then I'll show you how we're going to start to put this together. Right. So now I've got six all glued together. We can start the construction. So the first thing we're going to need is the bottom, the bottom two. And they're going to be glued together here so that they form the base. So the first thing I'm going to do is stick two together side by side. So I'm going to flip them over like so. And I'm going to put some hot glue just down the middle. Like so. And then just push them together and hold them for a few seconds for that glue to set. that's going to be my bottom piece like so the feet are going to go on the bottom now for the feet your score lines are done so you've just got to fold it in and basically you're going to be sticking these two to the bottom now because it's kind of 
needs to fit snugly like that to form that. What I like to do is put a bit of tape to hold them together so that it stays in shape while I glue the bottom because once the bottom's glued it's fine but obviously holding it and getting it in the right place is a little bit tricky so what I like to do is kind of push those together so they're in the right position and then just put a bit of tape across the two so that holds that sort of where I want it then we can add some hot glue to the bottom and then these are going to go either end so feel with your fingers that you're kind of straight with it you've got with hot glue you you've you've only got a couple of seconds but you do have a couple of seconds of wiggle room so and the good thing is is this doesn't fit sort of snugly right up against the edge it's sort of about a millimeter in so you've got a tiny bit of wiggle room if you want to once that's dry you could take that tape off but to be quite honest you're not really going to see the underneath so i don't worry about that so that's one side so i'm going to do the same with the other side like so and i'll just get a bit of tape to hold it together while i stick it so pop that together, pop my bit of tape across the join just to hold it kind of together for me. And then hot glue on the bottom. And then this is going to go like so on this end. So I'll push that down, let that hot glue set. Perfect. Now, I this is kind of optional, but I would highly recommend doing it because once you've started adding all your drawers, there's quite the only thing holding the whole thing together really is these two being stuck together. So I like to strengthen the bottom. So I've cut just a piece of extra mat board and I'm going to trim that so it fits snugly. I would generally be covering this with the same tan just so it looks neat, but I'm not going to bother just for time now. So we're just going to pop that underneath. As you can see, I've done one with coloured here and then on this one, I've done the same. I've just used some craft cards so it ties in. Uh, I haven't even trimmed that very neatly, but I'm just doing it to show you. Um, definitely cover it with whatever you're using. For your decoration so that it looks neat i know you're not going to really see the underneath but if you're going to all this trouble you kind of want it to all look nice so nice bit of hot glue on there just to keep that and that's going to strengthen it and stop it bowing particularly you know by the time you've put lots of bits and bobs in these drawers um you know you are in danger of it kind of moving so then in terms of assembly We are just going to add all of these with brads. So if I bring in one that's done, you will see the long one is going to basically just go across all three like so. The easiest way to do this, though, is to just start at the bottom. So forget about those for now. And if you look at the bottom, this one isn't going to have a strip on it. Your long one is going to start from here. So pop that on there with a brad, that on there with a brad. Do the same on the other side. Let me find some brads and then we'll, we'll put it together. Okay, so I've got my brads. If you are like me, you've got a random tub of brads going back from God knows how long that you haven't used. <laughs> I've been quite delighted to use some of these up, actually. I've had these orange and sort of red ones for, God, probably nearly 20 years. And those are what I actually used on here. 
because the good thing about brads is they're very easy to colour. So I used up some of these orange ones I've had years on here. And what I did is I dipped my brad onto a Versamark ink pad, poured some embossing powder on, heated it, and then I was able to colour all of these to match my papers. Um, I saw someone the other day mention they had spray painted theirs. If you want to spray paint your brads, just stick them into a piece of cardboard, poke holes in a, an old bit of cardboard box, put your brads through, then spray paint them. Um, and then the other thing I saw someone say they'd done, which is a great idea, is use nail varnish. So use up the brads that you haven't used because you don't like the colours and just colour them to match your project. Um, I'm just going to grab any old brads for now because I'm just showing you how to put this together. So we're going to have the long one here. So let's just pop a brad through. And you just pop your brad through the strap and the hole, open it up at the back. And then that gives you the movement, which is so, so easy, so clever. Eileen is just a genius. So your long one's gonna go there. Then we'll have a short. And then there's not going to be one on this last hole. However, you might want to just put a brad through so you haven't got a hole. Same that you're going to end up with one not needed at the top corner as well. So if you want to make it look neater, the other thing you can do is you could cover. I did see one of the design team had covered this bottom row, which also helps strengthen it with a strip of card and then just poked her brads through. Um, and then, of course, these were covered with, with the strip of paper. So that's another option. So you're going to do the same all the way around on both sides. So we're going to have a long one at this end. Ignore the fact that my brads don't match because I am just grabbing anything just to show you how these fit together. Then a short Then we're going to repeat this on the other side. So long at the end. Got bits of glue everywhere. Oh, that bread's so small it's not going to hold anything. So long one at the end. short in the middle my brads are tangled up you absolutely can play around with this though um, if you wanted to make something other than a sewing box um, you know you've got the components here for all sorts of um, imaginative storage solutions um, I did see one post where someone had made like a little desk tidy because, of course, you could stack these either way. Um, and it's quite cool that you could have storage that sort of folds out. So lots of different ways to use this. So just experiment. Right. Last one for this bottom layer. So then from here on in, it's quite obvious, really, because you're going to come in with your next layer. And they're going to go in a diagonal. So you don't really have to think about it. So we've got that one there. This one goes in the middle. And then we're going to be starting here with another short one to connect the top row. So 
so these two are going to be on the top one to enable that so i'm going to flip over and do the other side just so this whole side is stable then so one through here I think the most fiddly bit is opening up the back of the brads, actually. Up through there. I'm not joking when I say these brads are definitely probably about 15 years old. <laughs> there we go. And then we'll pop one there. like so and then a short one there ready to connect the top drawer to so that's this side done and then i'm going to do the same this side i will jump forward on the video though just for the sake of time because i'm just going to do the same on this side okay last one then we're ready Okay, so we're just ready for the top row now. So I've got all my little strips on. And it's up to you whether you assemble the last row, then put the lids on. Or put the lids on and then do. I think it's easier to leave the lids till last because you can get your hands in to do the brads easier. So all we're going to do for this top row is fairly obvious, is connect up these. So we're going to have the end, the end one empty as such. So up to you whether you want to just put a brad through that. I would just to make it all look even. So these all line up nicely. I've got my right old mixture of brads here. <laughs> Some of these are really too small, they would go straight through. So there we go. So that one there. Let's find another big one. Let's get some more out. And then that one there. <laughs> but definitely the most fiddly part is just opening the back of the brads. And actually it's the most fiddly part for me mainly because I've got acrylic nails on. I think if I had my natural nails, I'd be finding that a bit easier. And then these two. So it's a very easy, easy thing to put together, really. And once you've done one, you, you really do whiz through it. So the last one for this one. There we go. So that one on there. So I can't wait to see what everyone does with, the, with these die sets. Um, oh, well, I haven't mentioned actually in this video the other die sets that are in this collection. So we're working on the sewing box. Um, Eileen's also got a fabulous embroidery hoop that kind of ties in with this. It's it's also a big die, so you can cut it from mat board and thicker materials, which is great fun. And then there's also a lovely little um, needle book. So that is fabulous if you want to cut it from sort of leather or felt um, and put pages in that are felt so you can put your needles in. So there we go. As I've mentioned a few times, the, the holes that you don't need, you probably want to just pop brads in so that it's neatened up. But I've now got my fully functioning box. And the lids, they've just got a hinge that you fold down and personal choice whether you want them opening this way 
or that way. I'm going to do mine this way because without thinking about it, both my sewing boxes so far are the other way. Um, and all you want to do is add some hot glue just along that sort of hinge. Pop it in, it fits nice and snugly and then butt it up against the edge. While it's warm but not hot, you can wipe away any excess glue. Should have just opened that so it's out of the way, shouldn't I? this glue off so that's one side so and then because it kind of springs up you might want to weigh it down if you put a heavy sort of um i've put buttons on one of mine this one i've put some little um fastenings and just the weight of that just makes it fold nice um let's open that one so i don't get glue everywhere like i did that side and just put glue along that hinge it fits beautifully snug so just butt it up hold it just for the glue to to hold you can always go inside and give it a nudge there we go and there we have it our finished sewing box i'm actually this is just the starting point for me which is why i wasn't worrying about my brads not matching because i'm going to undo these because what i'd quite like to do is cover this one in some wood grain type paper so i'm going to cut little panels and de decorate this one a bit more so um i will neaten this up a bit as well as i go like i'll cover that white i think at the bottom with some wood grain but anyway that is the assembly of it which was the main purpose of this video if you've got any questions um if you're having any trouble just leave me a comment below and i will respond to you i need to also mention Eileen Hull has a fantastic Facebook group called the Eileen Hull Fan Club and in there you will find endless inspiration and ideas. Her design team are amazing. They all have different styles. They all come up with totally different ideas. So it's a great place to go and, and pick up not only inspiration but also sort of hints and tips for putting these things together. So I hope that video is helpful. I'm sorry it's been a bit of a long video but I kind of felt it was worth doing um, because I know <clears throat> I'm a visual person. Whenever I've got to put anything like this together, I'd rather just watch someone doing it. So hopefully, if you're like me, that's been helpful. Um, please also subscribe to my channel. I do post quite regularly and I've got a lot of videos on Sizzix stuff in general, particularly um, the basics of using the machines and all the rest of it. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.